Hello and welcome to Starfinder Supplemental, a quick hit series where we tackle some of the random, bizarre, or confusing questions that pop up during our campaigns. In this edition, we'll look at aiding others during starship combat, we're going to discuss how Solarian powers work, and also answer the ages old question, can robots use telepathy? We had two questions come up during our most recent session about aiding others in starship combat. The first, was can a gunner aboard a starship use harrying fire? And the answer to that is no, they cannot. A ranged attack roll and a gunnery check are different mechanics, and harrying fire only applies to ranged attacks. However, my personal opinion from what I've seen so far is I don't think it would really break anything if you did allow a gunnery check to function the same way as harrying fire. But rules as written, that's not the way it works. A ranged attack roll and a gunnery check are different, and you cannot use herring fire with a gunnery check. And the second question that came up was, can a starship's captain use Encourage to grant a bonus to a gunner's attack roll? The text for Encourage specifically says to use the same skill as the person you are encouraging, and gunnery check is a gunnery check. And the answer here is yes, encourage can be used to apply a bonus to actions in combat and that does include a gunnery check. The next item we want to tackle is how the heck does a Solarian's Stellar Revelation work? This caused some confusion around our table this week and I'm going to try my very best to break this down. At the start of the first turn in combat, Solarians choose if they want to be graviton attuned or photon attuned, or they could stay unattuned. This is declaring your stellar mode. If they choose to attune themselves, they gain one attunement point for their mode, either graviton or photon. At the start of every turn after the first, Solarians choose to either stay attuned to that previous choice or to become unattuned. If you choose to stay attuned, you gain one attunement point for that stellar mode. Again, that's either going to be one point of attunement to graviton or one point of attunement to photon. Whenever you have one or two attunement points, you are considered to be attuned to that mode. And once you reach three attunement points, you are considered to be fully attuned to that mode. At first level, the max attunement points you can have is three. But as you level up and choose more stellar revelations, that max may increase to four in which case you are attuned when you have one to three points and become fully attuned when you have four. If you choose to become unattuned, you lose all attunement points you have, and on your next turn you may choose to attune yourself to either gravitons or photons, or again, choose to remain unattuned if you prefer. Alright, so with that in mind, let's talk a little bit about Stellar Revelations. These are the powers that are fueled by the Solarian's attunement. Unless otherwise stated in the abilities text, all stellar revelations can be used regardless of which mode you are attuned to, except for zenith revelations. So, for example, say you know the Crush stellar revelation. Now that is a graviton attuned ability. Just because it's a graviton ability does not mean that you can't use it when you're in photon mode. But if you are graviton attuned or fully graviton attuned, you get more options for how to use Crush. Again, the exceptions to that are going to be the Zenith revelations, and those are the two you automatically get at first level, like Black Hall and Supernova you must be fully attuned to their specific mode in order to use those. Let's try to walk through this with an example, and we'll be talking about a Solarian who is 4th level and knows the Black Hole, Supernova, Dark Matter, and Plasma Sheath Revelations. On the first turn of combat, Wynn chooses to align himself with the Photon Stellar Mode and gains one attunement point for Photon. He is now aligned with Photon and gains a plus one insight bonus to his damage rolls. That comes as a bonus to being Photon attuned. On his turn, he uses the Dark Matter ability, 
And even though dark matter is a graviton revelation and he is photon aligned with one photon alignment point, he can still use dark matter and when he does so, he gains damage reduction one versus everything. However, if he was graviton aligned and he used dark matter, his damage reduction would be more powerful and would increase to DR2 instead. On his second round, Wind stays aligned to Photon and gains a second attunement point for Photon. He then uses Plasma Sheath, which is a Photon Stellar Revelation. This ability makes all of his melee attacks deal fire damage, and he also gets two additional points of damage until he leaves Photon Mode. It persists beyond the next round. However, if he was in Graviton Mode, he could still use Plasma Sheath, but would not deal the extra plus two damage, and his melee attacks would stop dealing fire damage after one round. On the third round, Wind stays in Photon Mode and receives his third attunement point. At this point, he goes Super Saiyan and he is fully attuned to Photons. And being fully attuned allows him to use Photon Zenith powers. So since he can't use Black Hole because it is a Graviton Zenith power, he chooses to use Supernova, after which he becomes unattuned, he loses all three of his Photon Attunement points, Plasma Sheath ends, causing him to stop doing plus two fire damage with his melee attacks, and he also loses the plus one insight bonus to damage that he enjoyed while being Photon Attuned. At the start of his next turn, he decides to enter Graviton Mode. He receives one Graviton Attunement point, and a plus one insight bonus to reflex saves for being graviton attuned, and the cycle repeats. I think the point here that people find most confusing is just because you are attuned to one mode, that doesn't mean that you can't also use the powers that are attuned to the opposite. In most cases, you just have to read the ability's text, and if you are attuned to the same mode of that ability, you just get some kind of a bonus to what you're doing with that power. Sentient robotic organisms, or SROs, are a race of constructs that were introduced in the Pact Worlds book. The question came up in our latest session, can a Lashunta use their limited telepathy ability with an SRO? And the answer is yes, they can. Although SROs are technological constructs, they do not have construct immunities. Instead, they have the robotic trait. Therefore, they gain robotic immunities, which does not include mind-affecting abilities. So yes, the SRO Technomage in my game can indeed telepathically speak with his Lashunta brother. It's a complex family tree, you probably shouldn't ask. And that's going to do it for our first Starfinder Supplemental. If you found this video helpful, please give us a like, and don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell so that you don't miss out on any of our future videos. If you have any thoughts or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or send them through our Twitter or Facebook pages. If you'd like to use some of the maps that we feature in our videos in your own games, you can find them at Maps of Mastery and Zero Hour. Links to those sites may be found in the description. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you soon with more basics for your favorite games.